like to call this meeting to order. December 19, 2016, Village of Villa Park. I'm Clerk Koronecki, and I will call the roll. Trustee Aiello? Trustee Bolton? Here. Trustee Cazone? Here. Trustee Case? Trustee Taglia? Here. Trustee Wagner? Here. President Bullwinkle? In President Bullwinkle's absence, I would like to make a motion to appoint a President Pro Tem, our longest serving trustee, Al Bolthus. Uh, is there a motion for Mr. Madam Clerk? Uh, trustee Bolthus? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion for to Trustee Wagner. Thank you. Trustee Bolthus is our President Pro Tem. Is there a second? Madam Clerk. Trustee Taglia? I'll second the motion. Okay, thank you. Thank is you there a voice vote for all eyes? Nice. Nice. Okay, thank you very much, Trustee Wagner. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, first off, we have the Pledge of Allegiance, and we'll have the, uh, the winning uh, cheerleader squad from the seventh grade uh, lead us with the pledge. Go ahead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just one more moment, please. Remain standing. Um, I'm filling in today for President Bullwinkle uh, due to the uh, passing of her father-in-law over this last weekend. And uh, I'd like to offer her my uh, sympathies and, and uh, ask that you all do the same. Uh, Trustee Tagli, would you lead us into prayer, please? Certainly. Our Heavenly Father, will thou be pleased to grant that this meeting, thus begun in order, be conducted in peace and closed in harmony. And we pray to you, dear Lord, to accept the soul of Michael Irwin Boss Sr. into the pearly gates of heaven. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. <laughs> First thing on the agenda tonight is um, any amendments to the agenda. Does any of the trustees have an amendment? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item, and that would be the recognition of the Villa Park Youth Football and Cheer Organization. Manager Keener. Thank you, Your Honor. The, Villa, the Village of Villa Park extends congratulations to the seventh grade cheerleading squad from the Villa Park Youth Football and Cheer Organization on their recent outstanding achievements. After qualifying for the state championship in November, the squad went on to compete at the Illinois Recreational Cheerleading Association State Championship at Sears Center Arena in Hoffman Estates. On the first night, December 2nd, the girls put on a fantastic performance and were advanced to the finals. They competed again on Sunday, December 4th, where they place third in the state for their division. Thank you, Your Honor. I see we have the cheerleaders here tonight and their coaches, and uh, if you'd like to uh, come up here in front and introduce the girls. and I asked them that they would do a little cheer for us earlier, but uh, they're, they're a little bashful. So, uh, yeah, right there, that's fine. Why don't you, why don't you go to the mic so we can, people can hear you at home. Okay. Um, my assistant coach, Jacqueline Eigelman, and then we have our two junior coaches, Paulina Kapika and Jossie Troush. They are seniors at Willowbrook. They volunteer a lot of time to us, so we really appreciate them. We couldn't do this without them. And then I've got uh, Katie Corsini, Grace Roscoe, Grace Van Dyke, Maggie Siegler, Maddie Klebanski, Kayla Eigelman, Sarah Ball, Madison Orlowski, and Jasmine Carmona. And these are sixth and seventh graders that start in the beginning, well, the last week of July, and they just finished up in December. So they spent a lot of time. They worked really hard, and we're very proud of them. They were great for the Villa Park Warriors. Well, congratulations, okay. girls. Thank you, you know, so much for having us. We've got parents down there want some the pictures. You can bring your trophy. The press is there. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Get the trophy up here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
So how many teams did you go up against? Uh, the first day we went up against seven. Seven? Seven teams, and then we qualified for the final. And then we took the third. So. What were the total teams of the, of the whole season? Um, Excuse me, you have to go to the microphone. I'm Otherwise the home <laughs> people will never know what you're saying. All right. <laughs> um, the total teams that we Please played speak into the, the microphone. <laughs> well, the IRCA has over... 300 teams, but they're all different divisions. Yes. So in our category, we compete against seven. Seven yeah, teams. So. Yes. Yeah. Very so good. It was great. It was very exciting. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you so much. Right. Appreciate it. Okay, the next item on the agenda, agenda is an uh, audit presentation. Manager Kinger. Thank you, Your Honor. Brian Lefevre from the <laughs> Village's auditing firm, Sikich LLP, will present an overview of the Village's comprehensive annual financial report, also, knows the, also known as our CAFR, for the fiscal year ended April 30th, 2016. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, good evening. On behalf of Sikich, I'd like to thank the board for inviting us to present some uh, brief comments on the report resulting from the village audit uh, for your unit April 30th, 2016. Um, I was going to go through a few things in the comprehensive annual financial report, as mentioned, the CAFR. Uh, within the CAFR, there's three sections to this document. Uh, within the introductory section on the third page, Roman numeral three, is the award the village received for its CAFR for the year ended April 30th, 2015. This is the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting um, received by the village from the Government Finance Officers Association. And this represents the highest level of financial reporting within the local government industry. It's the 29th consecutive year that the village has received this award, so you should all be commended for that. Within the second section of the report, the financial section, the first document there, page one, is on Sikich letterhead. This is where we've given our opinion on the financial statements. In order for us to give an opinion on the financial statements, we're required to follow two sets of standards. The auditing standards issued by the AICPA, or American Institute for Certified Public Accountants, this tells us the type of procedures that we need to perform when we're conducting our audit. And then the second set of standards is the financial reporting standards issued by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, which tells us what this document needs to look like. And we'll see on the financial statements that um, GASB had some changes to the financial reporting requirements for your audit this year. Once we followed those two sets of reporting standards um, and auditing standards, we can then give an opinion. We're pleased to present an unmodified opinion. And what that means is that the financial statements are presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles free of material misstatement. And this is the highest level of opinion the village can receive on its financial statements. Um, in addition, this year there was also a separate single audit of federal expenditures um, that was required any time the village expends more than $750,000 in federal funds, you're required to have a separate compliance audit on the use of those funds. First of all, you all need to be real realize that you should be commended for the fact that you did have a single audit because there's not many municipalities out there that are receiving those kind of grant dollars or have projects that are, um, that are eligible to receive those federal dollars. You had over $1.2 million in federal funds that the village expended during the year. Um, and then furthermore, you should feel good to know that you also, um, in that separate document, it'll tell you that there was an unmodified opinion issued on your compliance with laws and regulations that could have a material impact on your financial statements. In addition, there was an unmodified opinion on the um, testing that we did on your major funds, which, which your, were your CDBG program and the assistance to firefighters grants. 
Just past the independent auditor's report is the management's discussion and analysis. Uh, it's on its own separate page numbering beginning on MDNA 1. Um, this is because the village prepared this document. It's essentially the executive summary of the overall CAFR. Um, if you don't have a chance to read the entire CAFR, I would encourage you to read the management's discussion and analysis because this is where the village can actually give the whys to its own financial statements. Following that uh, management discussion analysis, which is 11 pages, you come to the first audited financial statement, which is called the Statement of Net Position. I like to refer this to to refer this as the Global View Financial Statements. Uh, it's where you essentially take a lot of the funds that you budget and appropriate for, put them in two separate columns, and essentially have consolidated financial statements for the village. The one thing I would bring to your attention is that you don't budget and appropriate in this fashion. You budget based on individual funds. Um, and therefore, the only time you see this presentation is in the annual audit. To receive that unmodified audit opinion, you're, re you're required to present these global statements. I also mentioned that GASB had changed some of the financial reporting rules for the year. And you'll notice on page five, um, under liabilities in the non-current liability section, there's a line called net pension liability. If you looked at last year's CAFR, you would not see that net pension liability. It doesn't mean that it didn't exist. It means that the reporting requirements related to your participation in IMRF, police, and fire pension are now required to be reported. That unfunded or net pension liability is now required to be reported directly on the face of the financial statements. All of the information related to your participation in those plans has always been presented in this document. It's just that it's never been required to be reported as a liability directly on the face of the statements. This is what directly causes the unrestricted net position, if you will, of governmental activities to become a negative number. It wasn't anything um, that you did, uh, and this also does not change the way you fund um, those plans. Just one other financial statement to bring to your attention, and that's on page 11. Page 11 shows the revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balances for your governmental funds, specifically focusing on the general operating fund. Um, and you can see that five lines up from the bottom of the page, you had an increase in fund balance in your general fund of just over $789,000. What that tells you is that you're structurally in balance within your general operating fund. <coughs> the revenues that you brought in, um, covered the services that you provided um, through the operations of the general fund. And uh, ultimately, you ended up with a fund balance of $8.8 .8 million, uh, which uh, exceeds your uh, fund balance target um, that you've outlaid in village policy. Uh, in conclusion, the audit went smoothly, and we received all of the information we needed to complete our audit. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Trustee Wagner, can you use the term unmodified opinion? What, I explain that if you could. So once, once upon a time, um, the auditing standards called it an unqualified opinion. You can think of it as a clean opinion with no exceptions, and that's the same thing as an unmodified opinion. So we didn't have to modify any language in our opinion uh, related to anything um, in our audits. Thank Good you. question. I have a question. Sure. Normally, whenever I dealt with an auditor and had some financial statements, there's always, after they go through looking at the village, there's always a few areas where you think there should be some improvement. Mm -hmm. it, did you come across any of those? Uh, so, there, so there were two separate documents issued. Um, one is the management letter, which is a document that you're required to post on your website. And then there's also a communication to the board with other smaller suggestions. The main, the main um, suggestion that we had related to, um, to the village was related to these grants. Grants come from various departments within the village, um, which is great that the grants are, are secured by various um, departments um, after the board blesses those grant um, requests. Um, but in terms of the, uh, the reporting for those grants, you want those to be consolidated in, in the finance department because they're versed on the financial reporting for the grants. Um, and so that was our recommendations, is just to make sure we have that consolidation process put into place um, here at the village, because we did have a few um, adjustments to the financial statements that we recommended as part of our audit of grants. Okay. Thank you. I didn't have There's also, and there's also, um, 
it becomes a two-way document because the village has, management has also drafted responses to those comments. So then we will um, then follow up on those comments in our audit next year and give you a report on the status of those uh, recommendations. Good. Very good question. Thank you. Anyone else? No, seeing anything done. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. Enjoyed working with the village. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, staff, for the work you did on that. Next item on the agenda is consider a resolution of the Village of Villa Park to Page County, Illinois, waiving the formal bidding process for approving the purchase of 15 automated external defibrillators, commonly known as AEDs, for the village uh, buildings and vehicles. Mandra Keener. Thank you, Ron. The village currently uses Phillips FR2, FR2X automated external defibrillators, also known as AEDs, and five police and two fire vehicles, and also one unit in the police station, one unit in the community, Iowa Community Center, and one at Lufkin and Jefferson Pools. Many of these defibrillators are at the end of their useful life and in need of replacement. Fire Department frontline ambulances and engines are equipped with Physio Control Life Pack 15 <coughs> heart monitor defibrillators. Due to the incompatibility of Phillips and Physio Control defibrillators, transfer of care from police to fire personnel is more difficult when the police are on the scene uh, first. With all village buildings and vehicles having the same AED units, there will be no need to switch out equipment improving patient outcome. The addition of AED units at Village Hall, Community Recreation Building, Sugar Creek Golf Course, and the library, and having staff trained, this will increase a, pa a patient's chance of survival if a cardiac arrest were to occur to a citizen while visiting any village building. Staff is respectfully requesting to purchase 15 life pack CR plus AED units from Physio Control Inc. at a total cost of $23,516. Additionally, Physio Control has applied a trade-in discount of $1,800 for 11 Philips FR2, FR2 Plus units and one Physio Control Life Pack 500, which is reflected in the final price. Sufficient funds for this purchase, including $3,850 in donations, are available in the Equipment Replacement Fund account number 65502-0241. And your honor and board and folks, present and at home, the 3850 is from the St. A's um, Knights of Columbus organization and uh, Barks and Boots held also an event at the VFW and donated proceeds for the purchase of uh, an AED. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, have a consensus to move this forward. Okay, Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Bolton? Yes. Next item is consider a resolution of the Village of Villa Park to Page County, Illinois, approving an agreement between the Village of Villa Park to Page County, Illinois, and the State of Illinois, Il the State of Illinois, Illinois Department of Transportation for the improvement of Summit, Summit Avenue from Roosevelt Road to Madison Street and the appropriation of funds for the village share of the project cost. Manager Keener. Thank you, Your Honor. The village will be receiving surface transportation program funding for construction and phase three construction engineering toward the resurfacing of Summit Avenue from Madison to Roosevelt, excluding unincorporated portions. A local agency agreement with the Illinois Department of Transportation proposes to provide up to $603,000 in federal funding for the project which is planned for a January 2017 big letting. The village's share of the expenses, $201,000, will come from Street Improvement Fund accounts 6502-10292 and 6502-10299. Thank you, Your Honor. Any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, any questions from the board? Pre uh, Trustee Cozzo. Um the unincorporated areas, is um, York Township going to be working with IDOT to get those paved also as part of this project? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you the same thing. What will, what staff plans on doing is of approaching the um, township to see if uh, they're willing to 
pave in the same manner so there's no stop gaps, um, which has occurred in the past. So we want to be proactive and address that issue. Okay. Thank you. So, Thank the, you. so therefore, the expense portion of the Villa Park, the 201,000, um, could be less, or would we? No. The same, Your Honor. And it excludes unincorporated areas. It excludes it. Okay. Yeah, there'd be start and stop. That makes sense. Trusty Wagner. Well, no. Oh, no. Penis right, is here. No, it, it will exclude unincorporated areas because they did theirs a few years ago. So theirs is already done. Yeah. So we did approach them and they said, no, ours is okay. only a few years old and we're not interested at this time. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Trustee Wagner? No. It, uh, yeah, that was I had the same question about the, mm -hmm. the township section, so that okay. it's been answered. Anything from you, Trustee Tangman? No, we're good. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to hear they're done. Uh, let's have a consensus to move this forward. Okay, Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Bolton? Yes. Next item is consider a resolution from the Village of Villa Park to Page County, Illinois, approving an engineering service agreement with Robinson Engineering Limited of Atasca, Illinois, for Phase Three construction engineering services for the South Summit Ave resurfacing project in the amount of $84,000. Manager King. Thank you. <laughs> Bills will be receiving surface transportation program funding that will provide for street improvements on South Summit Avenue. Robinson Engineering LTD has submitted a proposal to provide Phase Three construction engineering services to the village at a cost of $84,000. The Illinois Department of Transportation has reviewed and approved the scope of services. Funding sources for the project include the STP grant and street improvement funds. The village's share of expenses totaling $21,000 will come from an account 6502-10292. The project is ready for bidding and targeting the January IDOT, IDOT letting. Construction is anticipated to take place in the summer of 2017. Any questions or comments from the public? State your name and sign in, please. Cheryl Tucker, 434 South Cornell. Um, who did phase one and phase two? Seeing we're on phase three already. Is the same company do the same? Uh, typically, uh, Your Honor, I believe Vetus would like to oh, answer this. <laughs> Director <laughs> uh, Since there was, this was a resurfacing job, there was an abbreviated phase one, so literally there was minimal phase one. Phase two was uh, done by Baxter and Woodman and Robinson is doing phase three. We typically like to switch consultants between phase two and phase three. Don't leave yet. And the reason we do that, why do we switch companies? Because of the fairness of the bidding? Is that why you switch companies between phase two and phase three? Uh, by having a different uh, firm oversee construction, if there's issues with the design, uh, they're less likely to hide it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good answer. Yeah. Uh, I have one question. This is not road referent, the money that's going for this. This, this is, uh, no? No, these are all non referendum funds from the Street Improvement Fund. Okay. Any questions, other questions from the public? Seeing none, questions from the board? Seeing none, uh, roll call for moving this forward. Trustee Cazone? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Bolton? Yes. Next item is consider a resolution for the Village of Villa Park, mm -hmm. DuPage County, Illinois, authorizing change order number one, which will be the final order, to the uh, contract between the Village of Villa Park and Misfits Construction Company for the 2013 Home Avenue Water Tower Grounding Project. Manager Kim. Thank you, Your Honor. The village has contract with Misfits Construction Company of Chicago, okay. Illinois for the 2016 Home Avenue Water Tower Grounding Project. Proposed final change order number one consists of a final balancing of contract quantities as measured in the field. The net amount 
a proposed final change order number one is a deduction of $9,880 for an adjusted final contract amount of $94,120. And your honor and board and folks at home, uh, the savings is as a result of the elimination of fence replacement. So we did not have to include <coughs> fence replacement in with the project so we saved some money. Thank you, your honor. Any questions or comments from the public? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, the consensus to move this forward, please. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Bolton? Yes. With that, we'll move on to the uh, formal agenda. First item on there is the President's Report, and we don't have one of those. So if you just, you're off the hook and that one. <laughs> so. And next we have public comments on agenda items. When did you want to do the agenda? Anytime you want. Go ahead. Please state your name and sign in. All right. Pat Hubbard. As I said, I'm Pat Hubbard, and I'm the Library Board President. So on behalf of the Library Board, I want to speak to item number eight on your agenda. It's on the formal agenda, and I urge you to vote yes on this item. A couple of weeks ago, you heard about the needs of the library and the plan to address those needs. The building is 47 years old. The systems are original to the building and need repair often. The shelving, elevator, and access to our building are not ADA compliant. The library has become a community center where people come and stay to use the resources and or attend programs. Demand and the best return on investment warrants a dedicated program space, study rooms, and small meeting rooms. We believe our building plan is a sound and practical one with much consideration given to keeping the cost down. The library is an asset to our community. It offers something for everyone. Our community needs and deserves a renovated and expanded library. So the library board urges you to vote yes on item eight of the formal agenda. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Anyone else from the public on uh, agenda items? LaBianca, give us one second, okay? Okay. Mary Keener wanted to make some comments before we uh, go into I wanted to follow the rules this time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Can I cut Not you off? Not like right? we have it again. <laughs> go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, a few meetings ago, uh, the board approved uh, having the placement uh, this evening on uh, special service area consideration for the North Avenue townhomes. Um, and part of that process was two objection petitions, one for resident um, electors in the area, and uh, the second uh, petition for objectors would be the property owners um, as of that date of the hearing. Um, and part of the process is if the petitions were to have valid signatures for 51% of the elected fo or, uh, uh, registered uh, electors in the defined SSA area and 51% of the property owners uh, valid signatures on that uh, objector's petition, then the establishment of the special service area could not uh, proceed. And folks, that's exactly what transpired. So staff has met with uh, Anita Lampianca uh, last week on Friday to talk about the SSA special service area and to review the petitions. And staff and I both felt that it would be uh, beneficial to meet uh, with folks from that area uh, before coming tonight to review the signatures just in case uh, staff couldn't read them or um, just to review them to see if we had the right number. But after review on, on Friday, um, it was transparent that both 
uh, the resident elector uh, valid signatures and the property owner signatures achieved uh, over 60 percent. And so this evening, um, staff would like to propose the removal of items six and seven on the formal because they are not necessary, which deal with the North Avenue Townhome Special Service Area Establishment, and then following uh, number seven is the establishment of a, a budget. So, Your Honor and Board, those two items, six and seven on the formal, are not needed this evening. Thank you. Okay. Is there any special way we have to do that? Uh, when we do the consent agenda, we'll just say except for item six and seven. Okay, well, it's not on the consent. Yeah, it's on the consent agenda, so. No, it's not. Okay. Oh, so we're not consent agenda. Okay, okay, when you get to those two items, just you just make a motion to the table. Okay. <laughs> 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 yes, I, I sort of thought uh, save you the trouble. So. Rare. <laughs> <laughs> Speechless, huh? Okay. Any other comments on agenda items? Okay. Okay. With that, we'll move to the consent agenda. Um, most of these items we've already talked about. There's oh, a the Oh, we have the amendments. Well, I already crossed it off. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Any amendments to the agenda? Uh, President Pro Tem, I'd like to ask that uh, the uh, the order of the agenda be changed and that uh, item eight be moved up to immediately after the consent agenda. It will be. Uh, it will be. Uh, It'll go up one one position. Six. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I'd like to move it up. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. Roll call. Yes. Okay. Uh, roll call. Trustee Ayello. Yes. Trustee Kate of Sanicky. Cazone. Yes. Trustee Wagner. Yes. Trustee Taglia. Yes. Trustee Volpe. Yes. Okay. If I miss it, let me know. Okay. Trustee uh, Ayello. Do we need an amendment to delete? According to the attorney, the previously no, we existing don't. six or seven. According to you the attorney, can, you, I mean, we can if we want. Um, it's um, it's important to remember that because uh -huh. of the petitions, it, it cannot be reconsidered anyway. for two years. Right. There's a two-year sta statute on that. Okay. So then let's make it out. Go ahead. Make I'll a motion. Under, under the time, I'd like to motion to strike six and seven items six and seven from the formal agenda. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Trustee Taylor. <laughs> Any and questions or comments? And, and that, that motion, if I could just amend it a little, it is prior to the previous amendment moving eight to six. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the no, point of that is. We moved eight to six a second ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll just I get it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Okay. You that's it. That's it? Okay. Yeah. Roll call, please. Is there a second? <laughs> yes, tag me a second. I'll second that. Okay, <laughs> okay. Trustee uh, Cazone? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Bolton? Yes. Okay. Any other amendments? You've got to help me through the rest <laughs> of this. It's all. It's <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll move the item forward to consent agenda. Uh, most of these items we already <coughs> talked about. There's just a few uh, A, B, C, and D I will mention. Uh, one is the bill listing uh, from December 19th, 2016, amount of $1,282,948.63. B was the minutes from the village COW meeting on December 5th, 2016. C was the minutes from the village formal board meeting December 5th, 2016. And D was the minutes from the uh, public hearing uh, from December 5th, on 2016. And then E, F, G, and H. Um, I think that's it. Yep. We had already pretty much <coughs> discussed in the uh, COW. So can I have a motion for the uh, agenda. consent agenda? President Pro Tem. Yes. I'd like to make that motion to approve the consent agenda. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Can you a second? <laughs> Any questions or comments? Yeah. Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Cassone? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Bolton? Yes. Okay, so <coughs> we're going to item eight. Eight. Oh, five. <coughs> five? 
Okay. I'm glad you guys are here to help me. Okay, item five. Uh, se per, uh, second and final reading of an ordinance for the village of Bill Park, uh, uh, Bill Park, uh, DuPage County, Illinois, levying taxes for the fiscal year for the village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, commencing on the first day of May 2016 and ending on the 30th day of April 2017 for a tax levy of $9,416,000. $407. The 2016 tax levy process is well underway. The Library Board approves their levy on September 28, 2016. The Village Board adopted a resolution establishing, uh, estimating the tax levy on November 14, 2016. A notice was properly published in the Suburban Life newspaper on November 25, 2016. A public hearing was held on December 5, 2016, before the regular board meeting. This ordinance includes a village levy of $7,302,149 and a library levy of $2,114,258 for a total level levy of $9,416,407. The majority of the levy is subject to a point a uh, 7% tax cap plus new growth. This is the second and final reading of the adoption of the ordinance in advance of the December 27, 2016 filing deadline. Any questions or comments from the trustees? A motion. May I have a motion? Yeah, then we'll have a question. Uh, Trustee Taggart? Yes, I'll move for the levy of the tax. Okay, so that's second? Yeah. Second. Okay, now any questions? Seeing none, uh, let's roll call vote, please. All right, Trustee Ayello? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Bolter? Yes. I guess it's now number eight. Resolution of the Village of Bill Park, DuPage County, Illinois, authorizing the placement of a referendum question on the ballot for the consolidated election to be held on April 4th, 2017 to issue bonds in the amount not to exceed $10,600,000 for the purpose of paying costs for remodeling, improving, and building an addition to the existing, existing Villa Park Public Library. At the December 15, 5, 2016 COW meeting, uh, Villa Park Library Board formally requested that a corporate authority of the Village of Villa Park consider adopting a resolution or ordinance authorizing the placement of a referendum question on the ballot for the consolidated election to be held on April 4, 2017. The ballot, <coughs> the ballot question would state, shall bonds in the amount of, amount, shall bonds in an amount not to exceed $10,600,000 be issued by the village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois for the purpose of paying costs for remodeling improving and building an addition to the existing, existing Villa Park Public Library building, furnishing equipment, and acquiring library materials such as books, periodicals, films, and recordings, electronic data, and storage facilities, therefore, and, uh, therefore, and, and paying expenses incidentals thereto. Said, bond bear, said, said bonds bearing interest rates not to exceed 6% per annum. Do I have a motion for the resolution? President Pro Tem. Trustee Wagner. I'd like to make that motion. Okay. Do I have a second? President Pro Tem. I'll second Trustee Kilzone. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board members? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Kazone? Yes. Trustee Bolton. Yes. <coughs> now with that, I think I've got all the agenda items. So just any? Did we move any of the around there? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Next we have the public comments on non-agenda items. Any members from the public want to have any questions on any non-agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move to the village clerk's report. Uh, no report tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, village trustees report. We'll start with Trustee Tag. Uh, on an island over uh, here. Uh, I don't have a report. I just want to uh, wish the residents of the village a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. 
So, thank you. And then we'll move to Trustee Bolthus. <laughs> uh, I too would just like to say everybody have a safe and a happy uh, Christmas and New Year's time. Um, enjoy the neighborhoods as you ride around looking at all the lights out there and the decorations. Uh, and I'd like to say thank you again to the village uh, residents who have uh, put up the decorations. I really appreciate them. And with that, we'll move down to Trustee Consultant. Uh, just a couple of things. I, I'd like to commend the Public Works Department. I think they've done a real nice job the last couple of snowfalls we've had. Heard a lot of compliments from people, uh, residents, and saying that the streets have been cleared out and uh, even the side streets are really haven't been, haven't heard too many complaints about that. So, uh, Public Works, you guys are doing a good job. And uh, Parks and Rec, I meant to bring that up at our last meeting, the decorations around town that you guys have put up, especially Village Hall in this area, and, and the streets look real nice. You guys are doing a good job. And then finally, happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas, and have a safe, happy New Year, and come back in 2017. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Wagner. Thank you, President Pro Tem. I uh, just want to let uh, members of the public know that the was no, I think it was there was an error on the calendar. The Environmental Concerns Commission will not be meeting this month, but they will be meeting in January. And um, just a, some, a thought that occurred to me, this time of year there are a lot of uh, folks who are in their golden years uh, who maybe because of the inclement weather don't get out much. It just might be a good occasion to stop in and see how they're doing, you know. Um, you know, sometimes they need help taking their garbage out or something like that. But I th just think it's a, a good thought for this time of year to to check in on your, your older neighbors. Um, uh, just wanted to I mentioned this at the last board meeting, but this is uh, this is an item that the uh, Villa Park Garden Club is putting out. Uh, we recognize their 80th anniversary, and if you want uh, to start thinking about uh, growing things in the middle of winter, <laughs> this might be a good, a good thing to pick up at the Garden Club. They meet the fourth Tuesday of the month. It's a great group uh, with a long history in the village, and. Um, that's it. I just want to also wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Allo, anything from you tonight? Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> happy Hanukkah. And we'll move on to the managers. Any ha other happy holidays to everybody? <laughs> Festivus. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a couple items. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. Our next meeting will be Monday, January 9th. Uh, we did uh, receive about 6.5 inches of snow in the last few days, used about 115 tons of salt, and I'm sure you've heard it before, but we actually uh, mix uh, bee heat with our salt, and that saves us about a 10% usage, making <coughs> the salt last uh, longer. So, with that, Your Honor, I pass. Okay. Attorney report. Just happy holidays. Okay. With that, do we have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Pro President. Hello.